Hi friends, my name is Krishna, Krishna Akumalla. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We already discussed about simple average price method in our previous video, right? In today's video, we are going to discuss on weighted average price method. We are going to discuss on weighted average price method. This is also going to be a very small video. And I will take one, uh, you know, we, I will explain what is weighted average and I will also show you an illustration. With that, we can close this video. Right? Without wasting much time, let us get into the presentation. Okay? Okay, guys. We already discussed about simple average price method. Right? What was that? We will simply take the number of prices. For example, in our previous video, we took 50 plus 55 plus 55 plus 60 plus 47. So these are the prices we have taken into account. Divided by, since we have taken 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 prices, we divided by 5 and we got average price. That is called a simple average price. Now, what we are going to do in weighted average price is very simple. You just need to multiply your quantity along with the price. You just need to multiply quantity along with the price because your quantity is nothing but the weight. So you are not going to take only prices alone in this method. You will take price into account, also quantity into account. That is the reason we are calling this as a weighted average method. Why weighted average method? Along with the price, we are taking the weight of the price as well. What is the weight of the price? Quantity. So quantity is the weight of the price. So we are taking the quantity into account along with the price, multiplying and taking the average price. How weight has to be calculated? How weighted average price has to be calculated? That is something which I am going to explain with the example now so that it will be very very clear for you so before we getting into that let us understand the definition simple average price does not consider the quantities purchased in various lots what did we do in simple average method we simply took these prices and divided by the number of you know prices we have taken into account arrived what should be the 53.4 if i remember correctly this is the average price we arrived and multiplied with the uh, you know, closing stock 2600 minus 1600 is equal to 1000. 2600 is the purchase quantity, 1600 is the production issue to the production. So, net net, we have 1000 quantity as closing stock. We multiplied that with 1000. So, we got the closing inventory value that was in simple average method. So, that, that now we are what we are going to do, we are going to add the weights now. However, it is more logical to compute weighted average price using the quantities purchased in a lot as weights. As I said previously, in weighted average price method, what we are going to do is, we are taking the price, along with the price, we are also multiplying with the quantity. This quantity is the weight. This quantity is the weight. So we are taking the quantity and multiplying with the price and arriving the average price. So that is what it is saying. So it is always, you know, uh, it, it makes sense for us to logical and make sense, uh, you know, multiplying with the quantity. It will give the, you know, right you know, average price. So that is the reason why weighted average price is being calculated by taking quantity and price together into account. Right? Under weighted average price method, cost of goods available for sale during the period is aggregated and then divided by number of units available for sale during the period to calculate average you know, price per unit. This I am going to explain now while explaining the uh, you know um, illustration so that it will be very very clear for you, right? So let us you know get into <clears throat> the illustration so that it will be very easy for you to understand. Let me clean this up first. Okay, now, here in this illustration, what is that we are, we are seeing here? These are the purchases we made. 
and these are the issues we made to the production so december 4th we purchased 900 at 50 rupees 400 on december 10th with 55 rupees so different dates different quantities with different prices we purchased similar way we also issued some material in different dates like december 5th 20th and 29th by taking this illustration into account we are going to see how the weighted average value is going to be calculated very simple okay let us look into this now now guys tell me we have already prepared in uh, lifo method i already show, showed you the inventory ledger how the inventory ledger format is supposed to be we said we have to have the date we have to have the receipts block under this receipts block what should be the quantity what should be the rate and what should be the amount similar way we have to have an issues block wherein you have to show quantity rate and amount and once we know what are the receipts receipts are nothing but purchases so purchases minus issues to the production is equal to your balance inventory e balance inventory also we need to show quantity rate and amount as well this is how the inventory ledger has to be prepared this is what we understood while preparing the lifo problem right same inventory ledger we need to follow in weighted average method as well okay let me take you through this illustration now uh, you know how how this has been prepared i will explain to you first what is that we purchased 900 so december 4th is the date you need to put then quantity how much we purchased this is the purchase block in purchase block what quantity we purchased 900 you need to put at what rate we purchased 50 rupees you need to put here and then multiply 900 into 50 45 rupees sorry 45000 rupees thousand rupees right so then there are no issues on december 4th so dash 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 900 is a quantity inventory available by end of december 4th and 50 rupees we purchased and value is 45,000. no change it here because this is the first transaction of the month now what we will do next transaction next what is there next is December uh, December 5th this next transaction is December 10th here but between 4th and 10th there is another transaction here in issues December 5th December 5th we issued 500 so after that we can go ahead with the 10th so we need to finish off this issue first so December 5th we need to put here there is no purchase so dash 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 quantity rate and amount will be nil and 500 quantity we issued let us put 500 quantity right now what was the rate we purchased previously 50 rupees use the same 50 rupees here and multiply with 25 uh, so 50 with uh, 500 and you get 25000 and out of this 900 <clears throat> we already issued 500 so we are left with 400 quantity with 50 rupees then our closing value is 20000 our closing value is 20000 till this stage there is no confusion i am very sure about it because we have not really got into the weighted average mode now we are going to get into the weighted average mode okay now let me clean this up next when is the transaction happened after december 5th after december 5th you have a transaction on december 10th what is the december 10th you purchased 400 at 55 rupees so december 10th you need to put the date 400 quantity you have to show as per <coughs> purchased quantity what rate you purchased 55 rupees then multiply how much it is coming 22000 so far no confusion issues no issues so dash 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 now we have to put the balance quantity in lifo method i said you need to show this first which one previous quantity 450 that we have to show but in this method we should not show like that how we need to show in weighted averages what was the previous closing balance 400 previous inventory previous date inventory was closing inventory was 400 how much we purchased now another 400 we purchased guys be very very careful here 
what was the previous day previous day is december 5th december 5th what was the closing inventory 400 and how much quantity we additionally purchased on december 10th 400 so what is your inventory here 800 how did you get 800 previous 400 and current 400 put together 800 is the quantity clear now what is the rate i need to put can i go ahead and put 55 here no what we need to do is you need to take this 20000 into account and this 22000 into account add these two 20000 plus 22000 divided by how much quantity 800 quantity you need to divide this with 800 quantity so how much it will come 20000 plus 22000 divided by 800 is equal to 52 rupees 50 paisa that is the rate you need to put i am repeating again how did we get this this 400 quantity first you need to take into account and what is the quantity latest we purchased 400 400 plus 400 800 we, we have to keep it here number one then we have to put the price to put the price what we need to do the previous closing value is how much 20,000 take the 20,000 what is the current value of the purchase 22,000 take 22,000 add these two 20 plus 22,000 divided by what is the quantity we purchased total in total how much quantity we have in closing inventory 800 so if you add 20,000 plus 22,000 divided by 800 you get average price 52 rupees 50 paisa this average price you got it because you multiplied your quantity with the price see here 400 into 50 20,000 you multiplied this 20,000 you got it by multiplying quantity with the price here 22,000 you got it by multiplying 400 with 55 so you got it 22 so we are taking quantity and the price together into account for calculating the average price so that is the reason 20,000 plus 22,000 divided by 800 if I put I get 52 rupees 50 paisa that should be the price I need to take for closing in my on December 10th so then my closing inventory value is 42,000 how did I get 42,800 into 52 rupees 50 paisa if you multiply you get 42,000 I hope you are very clear on this point guys if you are not clear please watch repeatedly this video you will definitely get a good clarity still if you have any doubts you can comment on my video right right let me move on to the next point next december 10th we have done now when next date is what let me clean this up first next date is december 11th is there any issue between 10th and 11th no december 11th we purchased another 300 we purchased another 300 so go to date column put december 11th how much quantity we purchased 300 put 300 at what rate we purchased 55 let us put 55 is the purchase price and what is the value 16500 that 300 into 55 is equal to 16500 now we have to show the closing inventory how do we there are no issues here so dash 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 what was the previous quantity 800 plus how much we purchased now 300 how much it will be 1100 so 1100 we are showing this as our closing inventory 1100 we are showing it as closing inventory now next what we are supposed to do price average price weighted average price we have to show how do we get the weighted average price take the previous value 42000 plus what is the value we purchased now 16500 divided by 1100 so 42000 plus 16500 divided by 1100 is equal to 53 rupees 18 paisa 53 rupees 18 paisa that is what we have shown here 
are you clear so far next then multiply 1100 with 53 rupees 18 paisa you get 58 rupees 500 58500 clear right now let us move on to the next date next what will happen after december 11th you have december 19th issues are there between uh, 11th and 19th no there are no issues so straight away we can go to december 19th transaction how much quantity we purchased 200 at what rate we purchased 60 rupees so december 19th date you need to put here 200 quantity you need to put at what rate we purchased 60 rupees you need to put then what is multiply 200 into 60 you get 12,000 clear so far then there are no issues so no issues we have to show then now you need to show the inventory closing inventory previous inventory was how much 1100 plus the currently how much we purchased 200 take 200 so how much it will become your closing inventory will become 1300 so see 1300 we mentioned 1300 clear now we need to go ahead with the average price how do we get the average price take this value 58500 previous previous closing value 58500 plus how much we purchased 12000 divided by how much closing value 1300 let us take now how much it will come 58500 plus 12000 divided by 1300 is equal to 54 rupees 23 paisa see 54 rupees 23 paisa if you do this 54.23 paisa you get so you have taken 54.23 1300 into 54.23 you get the closing value clear right next december 19th is over now we are going to december 20th where is the december 20th december 20th is here we issued 600 quantity we issued 600 quantity let us put december 20th as the date here there are no purchases this is issue so let us show 600 is the issue what rate i need to show here this is the previous previous day what was the closing you know average value we have taken average rate we have taken 54 rupees 23 paisa same rate you need to take here 54 23 and multiply these two you will get 32538 right now out of 1300 we already issued 600 so we are left with 700 closing inventory and what is the price 54 rupees 23 paisa let us take 5423 and then multiply these two you get your closing value as on december 20th are you clear on this point right next december 20th is over now let us move on to 28th 28th and 29th two dates are left 28th we purchased again 800 at 47 rupees so we are taking again december 20th is the date 800 as purchase we are showing at what rate 47 rupees let us put 47 rupees multiply these two you get 37600 37600 is your purchase value no receipts on 28th so dash now what we need to do we need to add this 700 previous closing quantity plus we purchased another 800 so 700 plus 800 is equal to 1500 so you have to show 1500 is the closing value quantity and what rate we need to take you need to take this value 37,962 962 plus this 37,600 divided by this 1500 you need to take into account then what will happen 37962 plus 37600 divided by 1500 you get 50 rupees 37 paisa 50 rupees 37 paisa 
so you need to take 50 rupees 37 paisa here multiply these two you get 75000 uh, how much uh, 75562 so that should be your closing value i hope you are clear on this point as well let me move on to the next date next date is what next date is on 29th december 29th december 29th what happened we issued the quantity how much 500 so no purchases december 29th date we mentioned here no receipts so dash 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 then how much issued quantity 500 we have shown the issued quantity and what should be the price we need to take the previous average price previous average price was 50 rupees 37 paisa let us take 50 rupees 37 paisa multiply these two you get 25185 as your issued value are you clear now what is the closing balance we had 1500 on 28th december we issued 500 to the production we are left with a thousand so we have taken thousand quantity and what is the closing value 50 same 50 rupees 37 paisa you need to take into account multiply these two you get 50,377 are you clear this is how the inventory has to be calculated now if you see here what is my closing inventory value this is my closing inventory value what is my quantity thousand rupees is my quantity and what is the closing inventory value 50,377 rupees 50,000 377 rupees you don't require to calculate anything else you know straight away answer here by looking at this day you know column you will get to know what is your closing value thousand at 50 rupees 37 paisa it is coming to 50377 that is your closing inventory value that's all about the weighted average price method are you clear so if you have any further questions on this topic please feel free to comment on my video so that I can get back to you, right? Thank you so much.